The thought of my focus today comes from the book of Zephaniah. Even though this book is only three chapters long, there is a very powerful lesson that we can learn from it. The Lord speaks to Zephaniah and gives him a word for the people, telling them that he is about to pour out his judgment. He is about to pour out his wrath because he is angry. He is frustrated with their idolatry, with their self-sufficiency, with the fact that they think only about themselves and what pleases themselves. They don't think about whether they're pleasing God. They don't think about what they're doing if it's honoring or bringing glory to the kingdom of God or to God himself. They're not worried about whether what they're doing is in the will of God. They're not worried about any of that. They're only worried about what they can do for themselves, how they can provide for themselves and not allowing God to provide for him or for them. And they have angered God. So he is pouring out his frustration. He is pouring out his wrath. And the almost the entire book of Zephaniah is God's judgment on the people. He, through the first two and a half chapters, he is pouring out his wrath. He is pouring out his anger. And then you see a twist to the story. In the middle of the third chapter, you find hope. You find restoration. And you find the love that God has for us. In verse 17 in the Amplified Classic, it says, The Lord your God is in the midst of you, a mighty one, a Savior who saves. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will rest in silent satisfaction. And in his love, he will be silent and will make no mention of past sins, nor will he bring them to remembrance. He will exult over you with singing. What a comforting thought that is. That a God who was so frustrated and so angry at what those people did, and he's angry and frustrated with the way the world is now and with what things people are doing now yet he still loves us enough to rejoice over us to look after us to protect us like a father corrects a child God also corrects his children and when a father corrects their child they after the correction, they hug them, they love them, they show them that even though they messed up, that they still love them and that they are still there for them. God does the same thing with us. He corrects us and shows us where we are making our mistake. And when we are obedient to his word and we repent of the things that he had corrected us on, he pulls us in close. He holds our hand and he loves us and shows us how much he loves us. He whispers in our ears how much he loves us. The thought that he is singing over me or he is singing over us and the thought that he rejoices over me paints such a vivid picture of how much love God has for us. How much love he holds in our in his heart for us. How much joy he gets when he sees us doing as he's called us to. When he sees us obeying his word. When he sees us on our faces in prayer. Or when he sees us just singing to him. He sings over us. Think on this thought today. That we can never outrun we can never hide we can never go too far that the love of God can't find us that the love of God cannot reach us that the love of God will not continue to stretch out his arms to pull us in and pull us close and let us know that we are still his we still belong to him and he fights for us every single day because he loves us 
that much. So today, I'd like to challenge you to listen for him singing over you. I'd like to challenge you to listen for him rejoicing over you because he loves you.